Let's talk about internal bleaching of a dark tooth. You can see this young man has had a bicycle accident. And as is often the case, the tooth is damaged and it turns dark. You know, the blood inside the tooth gets into the dental tubules and it makes it dark. And I'm going to show you how to go from a dark tooth to here. Very simple, straightforward technique. Now, this is the final result that we're going to demonstrate this morning how to achieve. Ultimately, endodontics was performed on the tooth. Chances are 99% the pulp is necrotic and uh, will require endodontics. So I'm first ice testing it. We've shown this technique of ice testing and you just put some water in a anesthetic carpule with some dental floss in the carpule. You can refer to the Dental Minute video on that technique and then ice test this tooth and the adjacent teeth. Now be sure that the patient is not responding to the cold on the gingival tissue. Be sure he's responding to the ice on the tooth. But this is a very good way to pulp test teeth in a very simple way. Just put ice and ask, go back and forth and ask the patient if all the teeth feel the same or if he Ideally, what will happen, or probably what's going to happen, is he's going to feel these teeth. He's going to feel the stimuli of the ice on the adjacent teeth, but he won't feel it on the damaged tooth. And in that case, you know, this tooth is going to require endodontics. So this is local anesthetic, and watch the video on how to give a painless and profound local anesthetic injection. Your patients will love you. I hear all the time in my practice that uh, dental procedures, including local anesthetic, were painful in the previous dental office the patients were in. Don't let that happen. It's so easy to give a totally painless and profound dental injection. So watch the Dental Minute video on that procedure. It's a tremendous practice builder, especially when you're working in the anterior region. You can see how dark this tooth is. So I'm first getting a measurement with my digital application, and you can see this is about 24 millimeters from the apex of the tooth to the incisal edge. Placed our rubber dam, and then I'm using a 330 carbide burr to open the tooth into the pulp chamber, and you'll feel it just fall in there. There we go. And then I'm going to come back with a brassalier uh, coarse diamond and just open the chamber so I've got straight access to the, the uh, root canal. You don't want to come in and you want a straight angle into the root canal. So I've used that carbide burr, I mean the diamond burr, to open this part of the tooth so I'm not coming in this way to the canal. You want to come straight, straight access into that root canal. So I'm irrigating with sodium hypochlorite mixed with water and there are different theories on that. Some people, some endodontists say use straight sodium hypochlorite. Others use a three to one sodium hypochlorite to water. Others use five to one water to sodium hypochlorite. I'm more in the more dilute sodium hypochlorite camp. Reason for that, I've, I do not have trouble with endodontic procedures and you you definitely want to clean everything out but you also don't want a sodium hypochlorite accident and if you're using straight sodium hypochlorite that just bothers me with the inferior alveolar nerve the sinuses the tissue at the apex of the tooth I know a lot of endodontists would argue with that so you can decide what d uh, dissolution or what strength of sodium hypochlorite you're comfortable using I use a four, three to five parts water to one part sodium hypochlorite, and I've used that for 37 years with a high level of success, but uh, you, can, you can decide. So this is the real world endo rotary sequence, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the canal with about a 50 uh, file carbide file and just open uh, the access. Just create a large, a fairly large opening, just clean that out. So I'm creating a space for my sodium hypochlorite solution. 
Here we go, we're just cleaning out the nerve. Now this is the medium filed, but I'm actually using a larger sequence, and this is about a 50. And just cleaning that out, real light pressure, sodium hypochlorite in the canal, then I'm going to remove the file, rinse it with sodium hypochlorite again. Now remember, don't put any pressure in the canal with the tip of the syringe holding the sodium hypochlorite. Just let it fill the canal up and then anything in the canal will float to the top. And then I'm coming back, back and cleaning again, no pressure, no pressure, and then irrigating again, but there's no pressure with the tip of the syringe either. You just want to fill it up and let everything float to the top. And then we're going back and cleaning again with the sodium hypochlorite in the chamber. Now what I do is irrigate it out and then I go back and drip a little in the chamber so the chamber and the canal are full of sodium hypochlorite and my assistant doesn't aspirate that second drippage away. Then I come back with my file and just clean it real well and but the canal and the uh, chamber are full of sodium hypochlorite so it really cleans it well. Just that up and down motion and it's full of sodium hypochlorite. There I'm irrigating again, nice and clean. Irrigating once more. And then this is just local anesthetic on a 30 gauge syringe. It's a real simple way to irrigate out the sodium hypochlorite solution. Again, don't put any pressure in the canal. You're just filling the canal up and letting everything float to the top. And that local anesthetic solution is a very good, with the 30 gauge needle, is a very good way to do that. But I'm not jamming that needle into the canal and irrigating under pressure. I'm just putting it in the coronal part of that, of the chamber and filling it up and having everything float to the top. I'm just drying it with paper points. Then this is a calcium hydroxide solution, UltraCal. When there's been traumatic injury to a tooth, you want to be sure that you've killed all the bacteria in the canal. And this UltraCal, the calcium hydroxide has a very high pH, about 12.5. And it kills all the bacteria in the canal and helps prevent internal resorption of the tooth. So I'm going to leave this in for a few weeks. I'm going to squirt that under a little bit of pressure into the canal. I'm either going to put a cement or IRM at the, the bottom of the chamber between the coronal part of the tooth and the root canal right at the CEJ so that I block everything off. And then I'm going to come back and just remove some of the dentin inside the pulp chamber with this slow speed round burr. Just very lightly rub or clean this out over on the, the facial side of the chamber. Not much. You don't want to grind through the tooth, but just to clean a little of that uh, dentinal tissue on the inside of the chamber. You don't want to weaken the tooth. It's just real light pressure. I'm cleaning everything out. And we're putting our base at the bottom of the chamber with IRM and plugging that in. It's very dense. We're mixing the IRM very dense, densely, and then going to let it set. Once you have it placed, go check a hygiene patient, go do something else for 10, 15 minutes. So once we've placed our base, we're going to internally bleach the tooth with 30% hydrogen peroxide and sodium perborate tetrahydrate. Now the technique is very specific. You don't want to mix the two together and then try to place them in the pulp chamber. If you do, you'll have the foaming mass of nothing of air and you won't be able to put it in the chamber. It took me one time of trying that before I figured this out. I'm sure some of you other folks have figured it out, but it took me a time of trying because it didn't, it didn't specify that when I was starting to use this technique. So what you do is take a small cotton ball and dip it in the 30% hydrogen peroxide first. And then you just scrub down the inside of the canal. Just wipe the walls of the canal so that they're soppy wet. Then you're going to come back with an amalgam carrier and place the sodium perborate 
with that amalgam carrier. Now remember, the inside of the canal has already got a lot of the, the uh, hydrogen peroxide liquid in it. You're going to now place this, the sodium perborate, and then plug it with an amalgam plugger. And then keep going back and forth with the cotton pledget of hydrogen peroxide to wet the particles in the tooth and then fill it, fill more of the chamber with the crystals and pack it pretty tight. And then see, here's the hydrogen peroxide. I'm then wetting those crystals, the sodium perborate crystals, and then packing more. Now, I like to cut just a little bit of, of a cotton two by two and place that over the packed sodium perborate hydrogen peroxide just to form a little matrix for my provisional restoration. Otherwise, it seems like that restoration tends to plug into the perborate, uh, sodium perborate hydrogen peroxide mass. So I don't want that to happen. I want a barrier there, and this works really well. Then I'm just placing those fibers over the entry. Now you want this to be a little bit into the opening. And the other hot tip is when you cut the opening, you want the inner part to be a little wider than the lingual part or the palatal part so that there's a little undercut to hold your provisional restoration. Does that make sense? You want the, the part of the opening toward the, the chamber to be a little wider. You want to cut it like this and like this, and the part on the palatal side to be, be a little thinner so you have an undercut and it'll hold that provisional restoration. So pack this in very gently, and then I'm placing IRM. You just wet your finger, wet your glove, then put it in place. And then this is a little football instrument and it's wonderful for shaping IRM. And I'll wet that on a cot on a two by two, a wet two by two and then just move the sides of the IRM side to side. And now this is a week later. And you can see we're getting a good bleach, but this is a hot tip. The hydrogen peroxide comes in a big bottle. This is the only thing I use it for. And so my hydrogen peroxide was about a year out, year or two outdated. Now when something's outdated, it doesn't mean it's gonna contaminate something, it just means it's not as effective as it would be if it was within date. So after a week, we checked it every day, it looked like this. It ought to be bleached by now. Let's get some fresh hydrogen peroxide, which we did, and we took the old mixture out and did the same thing all over again. Irrigated it real well and repacked it again just like we did the first time. Just cleaning everything out, irrigating, and then wiping it down with the 30% hydrogen peroxide on a small cotton pellet. Just getting it nice and wet. Then again packing the sodium perborate with the amalgam carrier and then use your amalgam plugger to plug that in and go back and forth between the sodium perborate and the hydrogen peroxide on the cotton pellet just to wet it so everything's nice and wet. Then I'm putting the two by two at the orifice, just going back and forth. Sodium perborate, hydrogen peroxide, pack it, be sure it's nice and wet. And don't pack it all the way to the orifice. You want, a, you want about a millimeter or two of space here for your provisional restoration. I'm being sure everything is nice and wet with the hydrogen peroxide. Now I'm removing just a little bit of the mixture with a spoon, like I said, so I've got about a millimeter or two for my provisional restoration, cutting a little two by two piece, placing that over the mixture. And then this is a wet cotton tip applicator. Be sure it's wet or the IRM will stick to it and mix the IRM real as dense as you can make it. Don't want it mushy. You want it dense. Just keep incorporating powder into the IRM until it gets quite dense. You're going to wipe it with this football instrument and the wet cotton tip applicator. And move the margins into the undercut and rinse. See, I'm moving them into those undercuts. And this is a very good provisional restoration. And a week later, wham, how about that? So I'm gonna remove the provisional and 
the bleaching mixture. Okay, now this is the uh, calcium hydroxide paste in the canal. And I'm going to measure that and I'm going to remove the calcium hydroxide paste. So I've been bleaching while the calcium hydroxide paste is in the tooth because I'm going to leave the calcium hydroxide paste in the chamber in a traumatic injury like this for about three weeks. So now I'm removing the calcium hydroxide paste. I'm going to first use an endo uh, sequence, sequence rotary file and just with lots of irrigation remove that calcium hydroxide paste, irrigate it, so dilute sodium hypochlorite and then this is called is a citric acid 20% solution. It's by Ultradent. This is very effective in removing the calcium hydroxide paste. You have this little tip. Now this is after you've removed all you can with the endo sequence file. And then you squirt this and it gets on that little tip and then just move it up and down and scrub the sides of the canal. And this removes any little remnants of the calcium hydroxide paste. And I'm going to irrigate it again, be sure everything is cleaned out real well. Irrigate, cleaning with the rotary file. And then this is the final irrigation with the local anesthesia and the 30 gauge needle. And one more good irrigation with the citric acid and then irrigate that with my local anesthetic again. Remember, no pressure with the tip of the, of the local anesthetic syringe. Measuring my gutta percha cone, radiograph, right on the money, right at the apex. Irrigate one more time. Then dry the canal with paper points. This is my endo sequence BC sealer. I'm going to squirt that into the canal and then place my single cone. Now I'm cutting this with the endo pro, the heating element, and plug it. And then I'm placing some IRM over the base at the CEJ. And I'm going to let that set completely. Now why do you do this? Why not just put composite straight, straight in? I want, to, I want some kind of a barrier between the composite and the gutta percha cone in the canal in case for some reason the canal had to be redone. This is just easier for me to know where I am if I ever had to go in and redo the root canal. I don't know that I've ever had to do that, but if I ever did, that's there. So let that mix that real thickly and let it let it sit uh, let it uh, set before you place your composite. Now the shade of the composite is critical in cases like this because it's a single central incisor. We all hate working on single central incisors because the shade, whether it's a veneer or a crown, has to be exactly right. To the point, I won't do a single crown or a single veneer on a central incisor unless the person is some cowboy that just got off a tractor and it doesn't make any difference. So many of the patients we see are very discriminating. And in that case, I, whatever I do to this tooth, I'm going to do to, I'm going to restore the other tooth the same way. If this tooth is receiving a veneer, the left central, the right central is going to receive the same restoration. So it's a balanced smile. It's a beautiful smile. If you're just placing a veneer or crown on a single central, you're never going to get it exactly right in all lights and you don't want the woman to be the woman with the tooth. But in this case, we're not placing a crown or a veneer. So it's critical that the shade of the composite filling the chamber is right on the money. So I'm placing some different shades here on my wet uh, laboratory bench, operatory bench, and then I'm going to cure the composite because you don't know exactly what the final shade is going to be until the composite is cured. So I want a pretty good piece and I'm going to cure it of different shades that I think would be in the ballpark. And sometimes I'll even mix the composites together if we need to. But be sure you cure them so you can tell what the final shade will be. Placing these on the tooth so I can see the effect they'll have on the final hue, chroma, and value completed uh, restoration. You can see this is obviously the shade we want to go with. And I'm going to use that to fill the pulp chamber. So we're etching with 38% phosphoric acid. I'm going to irrigate that well. 
then primer adhesive, be sure you blow off the primer adhesive so that the alcohol carrier is removed. You don't want that alcohol carrier to be incorporated into the restoration, so blow that off real well once you place the primer adhesive. Now I'm blowing it off into that two by two so that nothing wiggles. Then always cure the primer adhesive before placing the filled resin. Now here's the filled resin that was determined the shade was determined previously when we cured the, tri the trial pieces and put them on the tooth. Put that to place, cure it, here it is. Immediately after placement, come back and contour the palatal of the tooth. This is a fantastic technique. Then this is just a Shofu rubber wheel, wet. Keep it wet. That's excellent for fine polishing of the composite on the palatal side. Here's the final endodontic uh, treatment. How about that? So as we all know, that's a very complicated uh, procedure, but this is an excellent technique to bleach a dark tooth and attain a predictable result. And that's the Dental Minute.